And now, for the heat of an August day and an August evening, from Bailey White. They say you can never really understand a work of art until you have lived in its life. These garish color plates and the big art books and postcards showing Van Gogh's sunflowers reduced to the size of Johnny Jump Ups are not enough. To understand the art of another land, you have to smell its air and feel its dirt. I visited Paris, France last summer in the middle of a record-breaking heat wave. All the Parisians had left, but the city was full of Americans like me mopping sweat and trying to understand art. Inside the Musée d'Orsay, the rooms of the favorite Impressionist painters were so crowded with reverent American art pilgrims that there was no way to glimpse more than bits of blue and green in fleeting spaces between shoulders and the backs of the heads. In the Manet room, I think I saw something brown that might have been a piece of a horse between a NASCAR t-shirt and a Gap baseball cap. There haven't been quite as many TV specials about a slightly less famous painter, Pierre Bonnard, however, and after a wait of 15 minutes, I was actually able to stand in front of a painting I'd studied years ago in art history class. There she lay a full-bodied woman, stark naked, exhausted and unashamed on a tousled bed in the deep red glow of an open window, her hair flung out across the pillow, her limbs spread wantonly, one leg dangling gracefully to the floor, sheets and covers slung and bunched in crumpled heaps. Man, I thought, don't these French artists know about passion? and with what skill they can show it to us in all its stages. With just a few brush strokes and dabs of paint, he had captured this moment, a portrait of slaked lust. I stood and gazed and dreamed and admired the quality of line and the depth of color until I heard the impatient coughs and mutterings of my fellow Americans behind me, and then I went back into the heat and sat with my friends at a sidewalk cafe and drank tiny cups of thick coffee and discussed art until our clothes were drenched with sweat. As the afternoon wore on, the heat rose and the air grew stiller until it seemed that whole magnificent city was trapped and smothering in it, like a lettuce wilting under a beautifully painted cloche in a Gustav Kyleboch picture. That night, I lay on the sofa bed in my friend's old 18th century apartment, keeping very still to avoid raising up heat. I think I slept a little, but I woke up too hot, feeling disoriented and slightly nauseated. I longed for fresh air and opened the window, but it seemed as if all the air in the city had already been circulated through many other lungs and bowels, and every breath smelled like car exhaust, animal feces, rotting chickens, and gum disease. I tried to think about those cool Monet water lilies I'd glimpsed in the museum, but it was too hot. I felt panicky and claustrophobic. I shoved all the covers to the foot of the bed in a tangled wad and squirmed around in search of a cool spot way over on the edge. I sat up and convulsively threw off my nightgown. The feeling of flesh against flesh was excruciating in such heat and I carefully arranged myself so that no part of me would touch any other part. I hung one leg off the edge of the bed, hoping my foot would stir up a little forgotten pool of cool air at the floor. Through the window, I could see the sickly red glow of another hot dawn. My eyes drooped shut, and suddenly, in a flash of comprehension, I remembered the Bonnard painting. That picture had nothing to do with lust and passion. It was just a portrait of a middle-aged woman trying to sleep through a hot Paris night. Bailey White lives in South Georgia.